Hello, greetings, and welcome to Dividend Blasters. This is our 61st video, and our topic today, strategic dividend investing, buying opportunities in the industrial sector. Yes, that's right. I do believe that even though this sector is up marginally, about 3.6% year to date, there are some really good buying opportunities in this sector. Uh, and I'm looking at the ones, not just the ones that are down year to date, there are a couple that are up that I still believe are good values. I'm gonna cover these and you can see on the title page, the uh, uh, the logos of several of the 76 uh, investments in this sector. You're gonna recognize a bunch of them um, and we're gonna go through it. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, but first, a little bit of housekeeping, a disclaimer. I'm not your financial advisor. Purpose of this video is for information and education. It reflects my own personal opinions, my research and my experience as an independent investor for more than 30 years. So please do your own research and consult a financial advisor prior to making any financial decisions. So how did I do this? Well, I went ahead and I looked at the sector tracker for the spiders, ETFs. So if you saw my last video where I covered the consumer staples sector, same approach. I'm looking at the sector tracker and I look at each of the 11 ETFs depending on which sector I'm covering. So last week I took a very close look at the consumer staple sector and I use this as a resource all the time. It's a wonderful resource. Uh, you know, um, and this week I looked at the industrials and, and, and what I love about this resource is that this resource by State Street Bank and Trust Company has an ETF, as do a lot of these providers, but has an ETF that mirrors the larger market. And they have one ETF for each of the 11 sectors. So it's very easy to follow. You can see the holdings in each of the ETFs. You can do a drill down, which is what I did. I looked at each of the holdings and I did an analysis of all of these. So not just the ones that are down, a few of the ones that are up. And I, and I went a little bit deeper and I'm gonna go through that in a little bit. Um, but you can take a look at the website. It's www.sectorspiders.com sector tracker. And you can uh, click on any of these. And you know what? If you want, you can actually buy any one of these ETFs. They're uh, on the New York Stock Exchange. You can go to your online broker and just, you know, purchase them. And so last week we looked at uh, consumer staples, which is XLP. Today we're going to be looking at the holdings in the industrials. If you want to buy industrials, it's ticker symbol XLP. All right. So anyway, I'm not going to go too deep into that. You can research that at your convenience. But just a little bit more background. These are snapshots of the 11 sectors. And if you look smack dab in the middle, XLI industrials, we're going to do a deeper dive into industrials. And we're going to look at the uh, 76 holdings. Uh, we're not going to look at all of them. I won't put you through that. I already did that for you. Um, but I'm going to show you uh, which I believe are the handful of of buying opportunities in this sector. But before I do, just for context purposes, you can see that each of the 11 is weighted. So uh, you add up the larger number uh, at the bottom of each of the little panels. So industrials has a weight of 8.31% across the 11 uh, sectors. So you add them all up, that's 100%. You got your S&P 500. You can see here, that of the 11, technology, which is right below industrials, is the heaviest weighted, 28.05%. Basically, you're going to see the companies like Microsoft and Apple and NVIDIA and those companies in there. Uh, they make up the most. But uh, after technologies, you're going to basically see healthcare, 13.3%, uh, financials, which are the banks, 12.69%. Um, um, and then after that, consumer discretionary, then communications, and then you're going to see uh, consumer staples. So anyway, you can look at that at your leisure. That's really just more for context purposes. The focus today is industrials. Let's press on. So industrials, as I mentioned, is weighted about 8.31% of the market sectors. Uh, this ETF, if you wanted to buy it, just so you know, it closed yesterday, October 13th at $101. 75%. It has a competitive expense ratio, 0.1%. All right, let's press on. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the 76 holdings really quickly that are in this sector. Let's do it. And we're going to go from highest to lowest, heaviest weighted to least weighted. So there's 76 of them. I'm going to show you four panels, two panels per page. First and foremost, Caterpillar, the Earth Moving Company, CAT, 4.54%, Union Pacific Corp., the Railroad Company, 4.2%, Honeywell, 4.04%, General Electric, 3.95%, United Parcel Service, UPS, 3.72%, the Brown Truck Company, RTX, you may know them better. They used to be known as Raytheon, the defense contractor, 3.54%. Boeing, the defense contractor and jet maker, 3.48%. Deere and Company, John Deere, tractors, 3.44%. Automatic Data Processing, or ADP, the third-party service provider of human resources and payroll to companies, 3.38%. Lockheed Martin, LMT defense contractor, really the preeminent one, or one of them, 3.28%. Eaton Corp, 2.76%. Northrop Grumman, the other defense contractor, 2.31%. Illinois Tool Works, 2.11%. CSX Corporation, 2.07%. Waste Management, the premier sanitation management company, ticker symbol WM, 1.94%. FedEx, we all know FedEx, 1.86%. General Dynamics, 1.83%. The defense contractor, Emerson Electric, 1.8%. That's one of the four panels. Let's move to the next panel. Parker Hannafin, 1.68%, 67%. 3M, 1.62%. Transdigum, 1.57%. Train Technologies, 1.5%. Excuse me. Norfolk Southern. 1.51%. Sintis Corp., the uniform company, 1.47%. Carrier Global, the air conditioning company, 1.46%. PECAR, 1.45%. Copart, 1.32%. Paychex, kind of like a smaller ADP, 1.26%. Um, they are a third-party payroll services provider. Old Dominion Freightline Railroad Company, 1.2%. Verisk Analytics, 1.19%. Jonathan Controls, 1.17%. Amatech, 1.14%. Fastenal, 1.14%. L3 Harris Technologies, the Defense and Aviation Management Contractor, 1.11%. Rockwell Automation, 1.1%. Otis Worldwide, the Elevator Company, 1.09%. WW Granger, 1.08%. Cummins, 1.07%. That's the weighting of the top 38 of the 76. Let's go and do the bottom 38. Left panel, next one, Republic Services. They are a sanitation management company, smaller a little bit than waste management, 1.01%. United Rentals, 0.98%. Fortiv, 0.87%. Ingersoll Rand. Paper Company, 0.86%. Quanta Services, 0.84%. Equifax, the credit reporting company, 0.73%. Delta Airlines, 0.73%. Xylem, 0.72%. Broadridge Financial Solutions, 0.7%. Dover Corp, 0.64%. Wabtech, 0.61%. Helmet Aerospace, aviation management contractor, 0.58%. Jacobs Solutions, 0.58%. Expeditors International of Washington, 0.57%. Veralto, 0.52%. JB Hunt Transport Services, 0.52%. Textron, 0.51%. Another airline, Southwest Airlines, 0.5%. IDEX Corp, 0.5%. Exxon Enterprises, 0.5%. Okay, one panel left. Snap on Inc., you know the Snap on Tools Company, 0.45%. Paycom Software, 0.43%. Lidos Holdings, you may have heard they are a spinoff of the defense contractor and Homeland Security contractor, SAIC, 0.43%. United Airlines, 0.42%. Stanley Black & Decker, the tool company, 0.41%. Nordson, 0.4%. Masco Corp, 0.38%. Ceridian Holding, 0.38%. Pentair. 0.34%. Rollins, 0.33%. C.H. Robinson Worldwide, 0.32%. Hunterson, Huntington Ingalls Industries, 0.3%. A 
Allegian, 0.3%. A.O. Smith, 0.29%. Robert Half, the accounting staffing company, 0.27%. American Airlines, 0.25%. Generac Holdings, you may have heard, they are the home generator company, 0.21%. And another airlines, Alaska Air, 0.14%. Those are the 76 <coughs> investments in the industrials sector. Okay, so now you can, you've seen the weighting. You know which are the heaviest ones, which are the lighter ones. Uh, you know all of the 76 now. So now we're going to look at price. Of the 76, which ones have come down and by how much? Which ones stay the same and which ones have gone up? Let's take a look. The shaded ones have come down, and I have ranked them in order from the ones that have decreased the most. Uh, and then the ones that are unshaded have... One has stayed the same, and the rest have gone up. What you're going to see is that of the shaded ones, those are 25 of the 76 that have come down. One has stayed the same, and 50 have gone up. So let's go look at the ones that have come down. RTX, formerly Raytheon, down 27.4%. 3M, down 26%. Southwest Airs, down 24.65%. Alaska Airs down 22.99%. Johnson Controls, 19.3%. Norfolk Southern down 18.46%. Xylem down 18.45%. L3 Harris down 14.87%. Paycom down 14.61%. Honeywell down 14.34%. IDEX down 12.13%. Deer down 11.22%. UPS down 10.79%. We know they've had some issues with their unions lately, and they have been getting hammered a little bit. Northrop Grumman down 10.16%. Lidos down 9.79%. Lockheed Martin down 9.34%. C.H. Robinson down 8.26%. Equifax down 8.2%. American Airlines down 7.86%. Nordson down 6.36%. Next panel to the right. Cummins. They are down 6.01%. Huntington Ingalls Industries down 2.54%. General Dynamics down 2.04%. Rollins down 1.72%. Allegiant down 1.69%. Emerson Electric down 1.35%. I'm going to stop here for a second before I start to cover the ones that have gone up. Uh, and I want to make this clear. Just because something has gone down doesn't mean that it is a buying opportunity. All it means is that the price has come down. And so we're going to look at some other metrics after we cover price change. We're going to look at dividend performance and history. We're also going to look at profitability, specifically leverage-free cash flow margin. And we're going to look at price earnings ratio. And we're going to do some comparisons to their sector, their market sector, to see how they compare, to see if we believe it's an opportunity. Okay. <laughs> Let's continue on, and these are the unshaded <coughs> stocks that have gone up. Baralto has actually stayed the same. Union Pacific Corp. has gone up 0.33%. Boeing, up 0.43%. CSX Corp., up 0.58%. Generac, up 0.96%. Waste Management, up 1.23%. Dover, up 2%. Paychex, up 2.09%. Otis, up 2.16%. Robert Half. 2.53%. United Air up 2.71%. Web, Webtech up 2.77%. ADP up 3.62%. And Delta Airlines up 3.77%. So, you know, why am I covering these that have gone up? Because just because something has gone up doesn't mean that it's overpriced either. We look at these other metrics that I'm going to cover. All right, let's go and continue with the bottom. 38. Okay, these are the ones that have continued to go up. Illinois Tool Works up 5%, Amtech up 6.38, Masco up 9.54, JB Hunt up 9.78, Stanley Black and Decker up over 10, Textron up 10.5, Snap on 11, Caterpillar up 11.85, Rockwell up almost 12. Expeditors International of Washington up over a little more than 12. Helmet up 12.59. Ceridian up 3.23. Synthes up 3.51. Jacob Solutions 
up 14.23. I'm sorry, Jacob Solutions is up 15.29. Republic Services, I skipped over that, up 14.23. Fortiv, let's go to Fortiv now, up 15.36. Train Technologies, up 21.77. Quanta, up 21.78. United Rentals, up 21.84. A.O. Smith, up 22.75. All right. Let's go to the last panel. The last panel, we have Ingersoll Rand up 22.91%. Packard up 26.96%. Fastenal up 27.05%. Carrier is up 27.4%. Exxon Enterprise up almost 30%. Granger up 31.5%. Eaton almost 33%. Parker Hannafin up 35%. Broadridge Financial up 35.11, Transdigium up 36.12, Pentair up 38.75, FedEx up over 40%. Wow. Uh, Verisk Analytics is up over 40%. Old, Dame, Old Dominion Freight Lines up 42.74%, Copart up 50.27%, and GE up year to date 68%. It is quite an increase. All right. So those are the price changes. Now we, we are going to do is give you my selections before I go into the methodology too deep. And I chose, basically, I chose seven stocks that I believe are buys to date. Most of these have come down in price. A couple of them have gone up. Uh, the selections that I have identified are Norfolk Southern Corp, ticker symbol NSC, L3 Harris Technologies, ticker symbol LHX, United Parcel Services, ticker symbol UPS, Lockheed Martin, ticker symbol LMT, Allegian, ticker symbol ALLE, Snap-on, SNA, and last but not least, Caterpillar, ticker symbol C-A-T. That's right. These are the seven that I've selected from this sector. I am, uh, full disclosure, I have several shares of UPS. I have several shares of Lockheed Martin, and I have been looking closely at Caterpillar. Uh, now that I've identified four others, I'm going to be taking closer look at all of these. I like L3 Harris. I like Northbrook Southern. I like Snap-on. I like Allegiant. All right, let's press on. So this basically is going to show you the chart, the monster chart, and how I arrived at these selections. So as I started off at the beginning, I looked only at price. I'm looking at price decrease first and foremost. And I shaded the first half a dozen columns green if the price has gone down. And I sorted them, right? And then I looked at dividend performance. So I'm looking at dividend yield. I'm looking at the five-year dividend growth rate or the CAGR. <clears throat> I'm looking at the dividend growth streak. And I'm looking at the payout ratio. So why am I looking at all these? I have um, rules of thumb that I follow and that a lot of us dividend investors follow uh, when looking at stocks. Um, for dividend yield, typically... I want to see something at least 3% dividend yield. Doesn't need to be too high, but I'm striving for a 3% yield. I'm looking for a dividend growth rate uh, at the five-year CAGR level of 5% or more, preferably more uh, at the aggregate level. I like to see the yield in the CAGR um, equate to around 10% total. Um, sometimes if the dividend yield is a little bit lower, I'm, I'm okay with that if the dividend growth rate or the CAGR makes up for it. And we have a couple of examples here. And I'm going to get to that. Uh, dividend growth streak, I'm looking for a minimum of five years. <clears throat> if it's less than five years, I'm not going to shade it green. I am probably going to shade it yellow if it's like four years uh, or three years. If it's less than that, I'm going to give it a red. Um, payout ratio, this speaks to safety. I typically like to see a payout ratio, which is the ratio between dividends paid out over earnings uh, in the range of 20 to 60%. I don't like to see a lot more than 60% uh, 
because I think that that could compromise the safety of a growing dividend. If it's lower than 20%, I begin to wonder, well, maybe this company <coughs> is not serious about paying a growing dividend or a dividend, and I tend to disregard those, uh, and I will e either shade it yellow or red. If, it's sh if anything is shaded red in any of these sections, I eliminate them. If they're shaded yellow, I will probably eliminate them, but I'm going to take a closer look at some of the other metrics. Okay, so those are dividends. Um, cash flow, I mean, really, this is a profitability metric. I'm looking at levered free cash flow margin percentage. So basically, this is the ratio of the levered free cash flow as a percentage of revenue. Okay, and what I'm looking for here is a high number. And I like to see something greater than the sector median. So the sector median is the median of all the stocks in this industrial sector. And you can see that the sector median is 5.62%. It's shaded kind of a vanilla uh, color. Uh, and so if any of these are more than the 5.62%, they and significantly, they get a green. If they're less or they're about the same, they get a yellow if they're significantly less, they get a red and they are eliminated. And then we're going to look at PE, price earnings ratio. This is really um, uh, speaks to the, uh, the actual price of the investment relative to its earnings. I want to see something less than the sector median. Okay. I want to know that I'm getting a good buy for my value. I got limited dollars. All right. I'm only going to choose the ones that I feel safe and that are the very best. If I see <coughs> one of these that has a PE ratio uh, about the same or a little bit more, I'm going to shade them yellow. If it's significantly more, it's a red. If it's less than the, the PE ratio sector median of 17.39, they get a green. The goal here is to get greens all the way across. That was the plan. So, you know, for instance, when you look at Southwest Airlines, uh, they have a growth streak of zero. That's a red. They're eliminated. But they also have a levered free cash flow margin, which is negative. That's also red. So they're out. Uh, Johnson Controls, they have a growth streak of two years. Okay, so they're getting started. But I'm basically not going to consider them seriously because there's not enough data there or not enough history. Uh, I eliminated Southwest Airlines and Alaska Airlines because their levered free cash flow is negative. So that's red. Uh, there's a handful in the middle that are all red in the growth streak, okay? So Paycom, Honeywell, IDEX, Deer, they're red, all right? Levered free cash flow margin for Deer is also red, so they're out, okay? Let's go down a little. Uh, I'm looking at Equifax. They got a dividend Kager, which is zero, zero years growth streak. That's red. <clears throat> and I believe that they're overpriced relative to the sector. They have PE ratio of more than 20, what is it, 20, 26. That's too high. I'm not paying for that. So let's go to the ones that I have selected. You will see they are green across, and I also italicized and bolded Norfolk Southern, okay? Norfolk Southern is down 18.48% year-to-date. That's good. Look at the dividend yield. It's not quite 3%, but it's close. It's 2.69%. So I give them an off green. And why do I give them an off green? Because they're close to three. But that five-year dividend CAGR is more than 13%. So together, you have more than 16%. So that's what got them the off green. So they're still in contention. Dividend growth streak, six years. It's more than the five. Payout ratio is saved, 38.54%. That levered free cash flow margin is massive. It's 18%, much, much more, more than three times the sector median of 5.62%. And yet the PE ratio is less than the sector median. It's 16.71, less than the 7.39. What else? L3 Harris Technologies, LHX, ticker symbol. They are down 14.87%. The dividend yield, again, this one is also off green. It's 2.62%. It's close to 3 not quite, but that CAGR, that dividend CAGR, 13.64%, that gets them over, that keeps them in contention. They have a growth streak of 21 years. Payout ratio, it's safe, 36.57%. I do like that levered free cash flow margin, 10.61%, almost double the sector median of 5.62%. And that PE ratio, 
0.29. It is less than the sector median. So they're in. Let's go down. What's the next bolded at tail size one? UPS. And I have several shares of UPS and I'm loving it. They're down 10.79% and I'm still buying it. Um, I think it's a buying opportunity. Um, the dividend yield, more than 3%, 4.17%. That five-year dividend Kager, 12.38%. That's golden. They have a growth streak of increasing their dividend 13 years. Dividend payout ratio, it's safe, 55%. Lever free cash flow margin, 6.83%, more than the sector median of 5.62. And the PE ratio, 16.72, less than the sector median. They're in. Next one, the defense contractor, Lockheed Martin. As I mentioned, I have several shares of LMT. They are down 9.34% to date. Dividend yield, it's a little bit off green. It's slightly below the 3% uh, target that we like, but it's close. And that five-year Kager, 8.45%. That's what gets them in, keeps them in contention. Dividend growth streak, 20 years. They're five years away from being a dividend aristocrat, more than exceeds the five-year dividend growth streak we're looking for. Uh, and they're going to be a dividend and aristocrat, mark my words. The payout ratio is say 42%. Okay, they're going to keep paying that dividend. And that levered free cash flow margin is a sweet 7.26%. It's more than the sector median of 5.62. And the PE ratio, 16.02, less than the sector median of 17.39. So just on this first panel alone, we've identified four of the seven. And these are all buying opportunities. The price is down year to date. Let's go to the next panel. Next panel, aha, Allegian PLC. Well, they're down 1.69%, not as much. And you can see that dividend yield is modest. It's 1.73%. But that five-year dividend Kager, 17.38% is a thing of beauty. They have a streak of eight years of increasing their dividend. The payout ratio is safe, 26%. And I love that levered free cash flow margin, 10.15%, almost double the sector median. Payout ratio, 15.39, less than the PE ratio, 17.39. You can see the ones that are shaded red here. You know, if you have a five year Kager of zero, or if you have a negative Kager, as Delta Airlines does, you're out. Um, dividend growth streak, if it's less than five years, you're out. Um, if you have a levered free cash flow margin, as does um, Generac, you're out. Okay. Let's see. Uh, PE ratios, if you have something significantly more than the 17.39 sector median, like Rollins, they're at 41, they're out. Uh, I would say that um, Emerson Electric, they're out 21. Uh, Veralto, they're out 24. Boeing, uh, negative PE ratio because their earnings are negative, they're out. Uh, Dover is negative, they're out. Otis Worldwide is out, as is Robert Half, they're out. All right, let's go to the next panel. <clears throat> so who else is in? Well, now we're looking at investments where the price has gone up year to date. And why am I looking at these? because I still think that these are buying opportunities and they are value buys. Snap-on Inc. So they are actually up 11%. The dividend yield is 2.55%. That gets them an off green. The Kager, 14.59% is a thing of beauty. Taken together, that is 17% approximately. Snap-on has a dividend growth streak of 13 years. These, this is a dividend investment, and they've been growing that dividend for 13 years, halfway to becoming an aristocrat. Payout ratio is safe, 34.79%. Levered free cash flow margin is almost double the sector median, 11.28%. The PE ratio is nice. It is less than the sector median of 17.39. It's 13.76. I believe that this is a buy. Next one, Caterpillar. Caterpillar is up 11.85% year to date. Okay, take a look 
at that dividend yield, 1.93%. Well, they are getting off green, but the green is the dividend yield. The five-year CAGR, 8.9%. Those two together are more than 10. And what I really love about Caterpillar is they have a growth streak of raising the dividend 29 years. This is a dividend aristocrat, and they're continually increasing the dividend. Um, payout ratio is safe, 26.82%. They're not going anywhere, folks. They are going to keep growing that dividend. I like that levered free cash flow margin. This is a cash machine, 13.21%, almost three times the sector median. And the PE ratio is 13.53. It is less. It is less than the sector median. You can see all the ones that are red, okay? If your P-E ratio is significantly more than the sector median, if it's 25, 30, 35, one is 58 here, you're out, okay? Uh, if you have a growth streak of the dividend of zero or one or two, you're out. If your five-year dividend CAGR is 0% or if it's negative, showing me that you cut your dividend, you are out. All right, let's go to the next slide. Okay. And this is the last slide. All of these have gone up. I did not select any of these. If you have a dividend yield that is weak, uh, is are all of these, um, and there's a few that are red, like Carrier has a negative di or a zero, zero dividend yield, zero dividend growth rate. They have a growth streak, which is two years. That tells me they've just cut it. Uh, you're out. Um, you know, you have a few of these, you have a growing dividend yield, but the or but the yield is actually too weak. Um, I didn't select you. And if your PE ratio is above, as several of these are, the sector median, I didn't select. Um, so anyway, folks, that is it. You have the seven. Um, I do hope you found this to be informative and enjoyable. Uh, and if you would kindly give us a like and subscribe to our channel and feel free to share it with a friend, we greatly appreciate it. And until our next video, have a wonderful day. God bless.